What's your name again? Arthur. Oh my days, seriously. Okay, -T -H -U -R. I'm here with Arthur and we are up in Hendon and we are going to be doing a mock driving test today. I've known you since last year, September. How many hours of driving lessons did we do all together? 20? 20. Somewhere between 20 and 30 hours due to schooling and everything else it just didn't we didn't get to a test yeah. unfortunately and in fact would you say the majority of the driving has been private practice 100 yeah. percent. but he's contacted me recently and is going to be doing a test you haven't got a test date oh you do i do where's your test 19th of july oh you want to tell them okay 19th of july oh yeah in ipswich, <laughs> ipswich. and we're in london are you yeah. going to be are you going to be keeping that do you think or are you no. going to be trying okay I'm probably still trying to find something a bit more local yeah um, it's the way it is with the way the tests are, uh, getting test dates, you could find yourself all over the country, which is absolutely crazy. So it's going to be interesting. We've driven up here, so he's had a bit of a warm up. We had a little bit of a lesson on the way up here, I guess, mm -hmm. of sorts, sort of highlighting some of the things. But I think you will see he is actually very, very good. Is he good enough to pass a test? is the question. Yes, I think that's what you're here for. Yeah. If you are interested in doing a mock test on my channel, then I'll put my link to my Instagram down here. Follow me on Instagram, send me a DM, and then we can talk about it, whether we can get you in for a test. Oh, and like always, like, comment, and subscribe, because it really boosts the channel, pushes the video out to a wider audience. Uh, and yeah, if you like it, hit the like button. At all times, I like to follow the road ahead, unless I tell you to turn left or turn right, or unless okay. road signs indicate otherwise. If I need you to turn, I'll tell you in good time. We're going to take in one reversing maneuver, possibly an emergency stop, and I'll be asking you some show me tell me questions. Have you looked at your show me tell me questions? Um, I've got like a general knowledge. And we're going to be following sat now for about 20 minutes, independent okay. driving. If you're not sure where you're going at any time, you can ask. Fantastic. So when we see you next, we'll be starting the test. Tell me how you would check that your brakes were working before starting a journey. I'd check the brake, brakes on the wheel outside, uh, and I'd put my foot down on the brake inside the car. That's what I'd do. Okay, that's it? Yeah, that's what I'd do. Okay. The answer to that question is, test them as you drive off. The pedal shouldn't feel, the brake shouldn't feel spongy or slack, and the car shouldn't pull to one side. Why would the car pull to one side? Uh, maybe the brake discs were warped um, on one side. How or many maybe brakes have you got? You got four. So if one is not working, then one side will be more breaking more or less. Or maybe it won't work on that side, but it will work on that wheel. So maybe it's still not enough. It will still pull to one. If you've got two brakes on this side pulling, yeah. and there's only one on that side, the car's going to pull to one side. Does that make sense? Yeah. So whenever you're ready, drive off to the left, please. Arthur has a good solid start looking all around the car before moving off. And as I said in the intro, this man can drive. Can he drive test standard? And then we're going to take the second road on the right. The first is here, the second is just where that man is coming out. Arthur is already demonstrating a bad habit. He tends to check his door mirrors without the centre mirror. He's not checking his mirrors in pairs. However, there's no one behind us, so in this instance, it's not an issue. But it's not a good idea. You should be checking that centre mirror as well. And then at the roundabout, turn right for me, please. On this occasion, though, he does check them, and it's very pronounced. On the exit of this roundabout, though, he doesn't signal left. Now, there is an oncoming car that isn't confused by his actions. So in this case, I'm going to put it down as not noteworthy, but really, he should be signaling left, especially if there's a vehicle there, when exiting a roundabout. End of the road here, turn right, please. And yet again, he just checks his door mirror when signalling. Arthur's first proper junction he deals with well. He does good, effective observation, waits for the vehicle to pass, and then makes his move. Apart from a slight discrepancy with his mirrors, it's a good, solid start. Arthur's now driving close to parked cars because of this oncoming vehicle. But once it goes past, he doesn't move away. I've said this before in previous videos, there's no problem to cross this line if you're not interfering with anybody. The risk is on the left-hand side. However, in this case, I don't think it was severe enough to warrant a fault. But do think about clearance. And then if you could just find somewhere to pull up on the left in a safe place. He now pulls up on the left-hand side really abruptly. 
in between two cars, finishing quite close. This was completely unnecessary considering there's a huge space beyond these vehicles. And his mirror work, even though he'd checked his centre mirror before, was lacking. So we're going to be following the sat-nav now. Sure. For a period of approximately 20 minutes. Drive on when you're ready. Great. Arthur's got an extra hoop of fire to jump through because now he's got to reverse. However, he does good all-round checks before he moves. Doing an extra reverse on your driving test is completely unnecessary. To solve this problem, look further ahead. It then gets a bit busy, but his observation throughout all of this move-off is bang on. He does well here. A little further up the road, he deals with his first mini roundabout. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Arthur's got a motorbike behind him as he approaches this roundabout. And again, I kind of felt his mirror work was a bit lacking. It takes him a while to also position properly to the left-hand side, and the motorbike is closing on him. He does check the mirrors here, which you think would be enough, but his position is late in changing, and the motorbike gains on him, and he doesn't check them again. It's not so much you checked your mirrors, it's how you respond to what you see in them, and for this reason, it's a driver fault for use of mirrors. After 100 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Arthur has no problem with this roundabout at all, and a little further up the road, he's faced with a stop sign. One of the tips that I always give when approaching a stop sign is don't look right until you've stopped. Arthur does, but he still brings the car to a stop. Shortly, I'm going to ask him to pull up on the left-hand side, and again, he rushes it. And then if you, again, if you could just find somewhere to pull up on the left, in a safe place. I do understand that Arthur is unfamiliar with the area, but he's already demonstrated that he doesn't look that far ahead, and he reacts quite quickly when he sees a space. He doesn't interfere with the vehicle behind, so in this case, I'm going to put it down as not noteworthy, but he just needs to look a little bit further up the road. Okay, fantastic. Drive on when you're ready. He does, however, demonstrate good all-round observation before moving off, although I would recommend your right blind spot being the final check. A junction or so later, we find ourselves doing the parallel park. That'll do. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna do the reverse parallel park I like you to move off next to the to the van. You're okay to do it on a van. Pull up next to the van and then reverse the car back in, finishing in within two car lengths of space, reasonably close to and parallel to the curb. Do you understand the two car lengths of space? Yes. So no more than one space between you. Sure. Okay. Yep. You ready? Yep. Fantastic. Drive on when you're ready. Arthur can park, but he does it incredibly quickly. He doesn't check his right blind spot once on the reverse, and then he has an oncoming vehicle and a vehicle coming up behind. The oncoming vehicle I have no issue about because he's trying to get out of the way, and that's fine. But the vehicle coming up behind, he hasn't demonstrated once that he's aware it's even there. For this reason, he's going to pick up a serious fault for observations on the parallel park. If you're doing this manoeuvre on your driving test, take your time. Okay. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. Drive on when you're ready. At the end of the road, turn right. Arthur again continues the theme of just checking his right wing mirror when turn he's signalling right. to turn. But again, there's no one behind us, and we had just moved away from the side of the road. He's now got a tricky right turn onto a busy-ish type road, which has got some roadworks on it. 
At the end of the road, turn right, then cross the roundabout and take the second exit. And then he's got a double mini roundabout to deal with. Turn right, then cross the roundabout and take the second exit. As he's been throughout most of this test so far, he confidently moves forwards into the space and waits behind this black car. At the mini roundabout, Arthur takes a big risk. You could say he just about gets away with it, but it's not something he should be doing. He sees a gap in the traffic, which the black vehicle in front takes and he follows quickly in behind. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. He should also ideally be positioned in the right lane here, but you can take the left lane as long as you don't interfere with anybody. Maybe he thinks the bus is held up, but the bus enters the roundabout as he crosses and it's a close call. This is not what you want to be seeing on a mock test. Did he get away with it, or was it too close? Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. You could argue both sides, but this is a serious fault for crossing traffic. Next up for Arthur is a large complex roundabout, the apex corner. And again, it's really busy. Arthur's turning right third exit, and overall he does well. He doesn't use his right turn signal throughout this roundabout, but more importantly, he does signal to exit. When you're faced with a roundabout like this, it's important that you remain patient. Taking a half chance could easily go against you and could end up being quite dangerous. If you're interested in knowing a little bit more about how to deal with judging the gap at this particular roundabout, I'll stick a card up in the right hand corner. But Arthur stays calm and the gap soon presents itself and he takes it straight away. He then follows his lane round which then leads him into the middle lane. He then does check both mirrors and signals to exit. He then holds the right lane for a little bit longer than he needs to, but he doesn't interfere with anybody, and then he moves back to the left. A little further up the road, a white Tesla demonstrates exactly what you shouldn't do by cutting in front. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, then turn left. And Arthur demonstrates what he thinks about that. Now I don't know exactly what he was thinking, but I think I would find it hard to disagree. Again, Arthur really only checks his left wing mirror when he signals to turn left. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, then turn left. His bad habit prevails, but in this case, again, I'm gonna put it as not noteworthy. A little further up the road though, Arthur then has to perform the emergency stop exercise. Okay, we're now gonna perform the emergency stop. Sure. I'd like you to bring the car to an immediate and abrupt halt under full control. My signal will be stop. I'll be making sure it's nice and safe behind this. Okay. Okay? Okay. So I'll be looking over my shoulder to make sure it's clear. Sure. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So I'm just going to move that just for now. Sure. All right. So whenever you're ready, drive on. Sometimes, as an instructor, it can be tricky to find a suitable spot. This certainly isn't it. And then up ahead, the road gets a bit tight and there's a few bends. So again, this is also not a great spot. The road though, then opens up nicely. So I think we might have the right place. Okay. This however, is not really Stop. How an emergency stop should be done. Okay, thank you very much. I want to ask you that again. Drive on when you are ready. And you're back on Sat Nav. 
he does do all round effective observation before he moves off. But his braking was incredibly soft and he actually moved the car into the left hand side. He's then got a tricky right turn onto a reasonably busy road, but he has no problems here whatsoever, waits for a gap, and then goes when it's clear. And then the show me question on the move. And just when it's safe to do so, could you put your rear demister on for me please? And again, no problems here. That's great, thank you very much. After 200 yards, turn right, then you have reached your destination. So when the sat-nav finishes, sure. I'll be directing you as normal, okay? Okay. You have reached your destination. Shall I just carry on? Yes, just follow the road ahead for now. Great. This section of road can be quite tricky. There are always cars parked on the right-hand side. And then what I'd like to do is take this next road on the right for me, please. And here it gets really tight and Arthur clips the curb. He just should have read it better. It was getting tight, but he was just maintaining speed. Next road on the right. And yet again, no centre mirror. He then lifts his hand completely off the steering wheel to say thank you, but he doesn't lose control, so this is not an issue at all. On this section of road, he maintains good progress, but not much else happens. So let's jump forwards to the next roundabout. And at the roundabout, I'd like to follow the road ahead to the second exit. He's approaching the busy Mill Hill Circus roundabout, and this particular roundabout is horrible. If you are doing your test at Hendon or Mill Hill, I strongly recommend you practice doing this junction from this particular direction. When following the road ahead here, you can pick first, second, the middle first, lane, which he yeah. has picked, or you could also take the left-hand lane. But he doesn't assess the keep clear in the middle, moves into the junction, and gets caught. Now, if he doesn't interfere with anybody, he'll get away with this. But the traffic builds up behind and can't follow the road ahead he is an obstruction to this white car and all the traffic behind it. For this reason, it's a serious fault for awareness and planning. He then doesn't check his mirrors properly to exit this roundabout and as he's exiting from the middle lane, this is more of a problem. The Mill Hill Circus roundabout strikes again. Arthur's now faced with a pedestrian who's trying to cross the road. And Arthur does the right thing, but he beckons them across. Beckoning people across can sometimes be very tempting to do, but don't do it. Wait patiently, nod, acknowledge, but don't beckon. At the roundabout, turn left for me, please. Arthur deals with this roundabout really well. It's quite busy, his view's not very clear. He's got a couple of buses, but he sees the gap, assesses it properly, and the moment he sees it's clear, he's ready to go and takes the gap. He then accelerates a little hard into this corner, but he controls it, so it's not an issue. And then again at the roundabout, you're gonna follow the road ahead. I then like how he deals with this one. He's got a vehicle coming from the right-hand side, and he's not 100% sure where they're going, and he waits for them to commit before proceeding. That's exactly what you should do. And then again, on the next one, he also does well. It's a three-way roundabout, and he only commits when and he's then sure. At the next roundabout, turn right. But yet again, no center mirror. There's no one behind us, so I'm gonna put this as not noteworthy. got a vehicle on his right, the first one crosses, he waits for the second and takes the gap. It's now a straight run back to test center and there's not much of note, apart from one last thing that's not really anything to do with Arthur. The speed limit here is 30 miles an hour and Arthur is hovering between 25 and 30 for most of this stretch of road and a van pushes up behind. We travel another 400 meters, and then the picture looks like this. Pick 
close. A little bit. Mm. It's rare that they do that when they've got a camera pointing straight at them. <laughs> the van does push up very close, but it may be possible that they notice the camera and then drop back. Shouldn't really be tailgating, not a good thing to do. He may have just spotted the camera. <laughs> and we're only one junction away, and that's the end of test. How was that? I mean, I feel like there were a couple of things that I would have done better. <laughs> but I think it went all right. I think it went okay. I mean, okay. It wasn't like my best. But... What do you think you could have done better? I think there were a couple corners where I didn't check the mirrors just in time. Um, okay. I sort of maybe a bit, maybe I was checking them as I was indicating that sort of thing. Um, you mean as you're pulling up on the left? Um, what do you mean on junctions? On junctions, actually, yeah. I don't think less so on the pulling up on the left, but on junctions, yeah. And then I don't know if I got the apex corner right. I don't know, but. I don't know. I thought you did the apex okay, actually. Okay. And I think there was one roundabout. You should have had a signal on to say that you were turning right. right. But you didn't. But I didn't. You're right about is mirror work. Because I should have been looking you this just, way. It's just your mirror work is not, it's not clean. And the thing is, there are moments where I've let it go because there's nothing around you, there's nothing serious going on. But then there are moments where, and it's specifically when you're turning left and turning right, what I've noticed is this mirror here. You just don't check it for mm. slowdown. Mm. So we were coming up to a mini roundabout and we were turning left and it was a little bit late for your mirror work. There was a motorbike there. Yeah. And you weren't positioned properly until quite late. And that's because you came around the corner and it splits into two. So you will pick up faults when there are things there because you're not checking your mirrors in good time. Okay, look, pass or fail? Fail. Okay, what do you think you failed for? Um, I think that I one of the roundabouts. I don't think I stopped like enough. What um, do you, mean you didn't stop enough. I think that I kind of just there was something coming, but was I just was it a bus? No. Was it a mini roundabout? It was a mini roundabout. Was it a bus? It wasn't a bus. Bloody was. Was it? Yes. It was a bus. All right. Yeah. I think the reason why I went was because I felt I had plenty of time to um, to go. You got away with it. You got across, but you interfered with the bus, and you shouldn't have gone. You rushed into it. Mm. All right. Look. Yes. Unfortunately, that's not a pass. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna explain to you why. Look. The emergency stop. So when when you're doing an emergency stop, you are simulating stop. an emergency situation. So you were braking really gently and then just pulling into the left as you were doing it. <laughs> So it's just not it's just not what an emergency stop should be. The parallel park, you well, I thought that was all right actually. I mean, you did a you did a really good job. You did a really good job, but the observations, so there was no right bias spot check. The van's coming towards you, which I I mean, I appreciate you were kind of in the road, you wanted to get out of the way. You had a vehicle coming up behind you. You have one opportunity to demonstrate observations on your reverse on your driving test. Just one. And that's the only one you're going to get. And if you or, although actually you did two I reverses. Did too, yeah. <laughs> We'll talk about those in a second. That was necessary. Uh, that was necessary. It was necessary to it reverse. It was necessary to reverse. Yeah, yeah, it was completely unnecessary to pull up where you did, but it was necessary to do the reverse. The Mill Hill Circus. <laughs> I've got to be honest, this is a horrible, horrible roundabout. Which one was that? It's the last big roundabout that you went into. You, uh, you were following the road ahead to the second exit. And you oh, had, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got in the box. I went in the you keep clear the, box. Uh, okay, now, you can actually stop in a keep clear and get away with it. Okay. It could be a driver fault. Okay. You can, provided you don't interfere with anybody. After you entered, you were kind of like, you could see you were like looking at it and thinking, oh good. I, and then a car came from this side who wanted to go ahead and had to wait. And because it's possible that they may have had to wait anyway, because that roundabout is so awful, but you were the car that blocked her. The reason that. why I went was Initially, I saw that there was no space in that lane. I thought I could have gone on the lane to the right. Which, to go ahead? No, to, to, to go to the same place, which I think could have worked because so the right there, there, was, there was a lane on the right and there was a black golf in There were three in, in lanes. It. There were three lanes and you're going ahead to the second exit. You're saying you would have picked the right-hand lane to go ahead? No, 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 no. I think 
there was a car next to us on the right that took the same exit. Yeah, but they should they? No. It's a horrible roundabout. Mm. I've done videos on it. I call it the impossible roundabout. But the way you've dealt with it, there is a lot of grey area on that roundabout because of the way it's built. Okay. But the way you've dealt with it, A, you've jumped in, stopped on the keep clear, then you've interfered with the white car behind. Horrible, horrible roundabout. When it comes to your mirror work, got to improve. It's this mirror here quite often. Whenever you're turning left and turning right, you'll glance at this one, you'll glance at that one. But for some reason, this one is not your friend. And I don't really understand why. Mm. This one is incredibly important. What is this telling you? Who's like right behind me? Yeah, before you do what with your speed? Slow down. This one, you wave the pedestrian across. Now, in the highway code, it's not... It's... I know, yeah, I, I know, like... But, like, she was in the road, like... I was, I Do you have to her. wave her? No, but she was looking uncertain, and I don't want to so be... So what could you do with your speed? Well, I slowed down. And then? If you come to a stop... Would it count as undue caution? No, if you're being... If, you, if she's in the road and you want to get her across the road, if you come to a stop and you... I mean, the, you're communicating for her to go, right? Yeah. So you come to a stop. Instead of waving her on... In this situation, I, I've, it's possible it might even go down as not noteworthy because there was no risk to her at that particular moment of you doing it. It's just not good practice. In the Harbour Code, it says don't wave people on. Yeah. It's not a must not or a should not. It's just a don't. So instead of waving, what could you have done? Just stopped. And then? Waited. Could do. I like to acknowledge people. Would you kind of know if I stop my car and I go like that? I might not be able to see. A nod of the head, I don't know. No, I do it all the time. They pretty much can see it. I mean, if it's night time, then yes. But I think in the daytime, I think you'd be all right. Or, it doesn't have to be this. This, in I mean, if you did that at a pedestrian crossing, what could go wrong there? Uh, just be careful of that. So you're driving a little bit like, as I expected, somebody who's been driving with their parents for quite <laughs> a long time. You've got to tidy up a bit. Yeah. It's really good in places, really good control in places, but it's just not clean and it's just open to mistakes. What about when I like hit the... You hit the curb. That was really like narrow, that road. Overall, overall, you have a, a, a fantastic foundation. There's learner drivers out there that would absolutely kill to have that level of control. It's really good on some places. Mm -hmm but you've got to tidy up. Do All this driving with your parents has done a world of good to you, but you're picking up bad habits and you haven't passed your test yet. Mm -hmm. This has been Arthur's mock test. I think it's been amazing. Thank you. Give him some love in the comments because he's a trooper for doing this today. Thank you for allowing us to put this on YouTube. I do really appreciate it. If you've got any value out of this video, obviously hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like more content and I will see you in the next one. Get well out.